The following video contains spoilers. We suggest watching the episodes alone in the dark. Hello, Wolfpack. We're back. Today's review is a very special episode. This story is the very first episode of The Haunting Hour that I ever saw. Yeah, no joke. This was my first time watching R.L. Stein's The Haunting Hour, back when it was still on TV, and it was so good that it got me hooked on the show forever. But does it still hold up to this very day? That's what we're going to find out. But before we actually start the review, I have two things that I need to say. First off, I don't find clowns scary. Not going to lie, I'm not afraid of clowns at all, and even the ones featured in this episode didn't scare me all that much. Now, the clowns are creepy, but not outright horrifying compared to other villains that I actually liked. Making clowns the source of fear always came across as something too easy to do, at least for me. Since so many people fear clowns, lots of horror writers take advantage of this and use them in a lot of scary stories to scare the kids. But I'm not usually a big fan of that concept because it feels a little offensive to actual clowns who genuinely want to make us laugh. Not all clowns are psychotic murderers. There are people who become clowns because they want to cheer people up. It doesn't help that even the Joker is a clown whose entire existence is to scare the people who watch him, showing how overused this monster is. But what's annoying is that the monster clown villains like him always act too goofy to take seriously. I get it, they're clowns, they're supposed to act weird while covered in outrageous clothes and laughing like psychopaths but I can never take them seriously as threats at all. When you make a villain a wise-cracking joker, don't expect the audience to see them as a dreaded doombringer like how they're meant to be portrayed in scary stories. Now don't get me wrong, these type of characters can be written really well, but I just can't see the fear factor in a monster that's intended to act like a comedian. Don't worry, just because I'm not afraid of clowns doesn't mean I fail to understand why other people are. The attempts to make the clowns act creepy in this story are actually very good, since they are pretty ominous behind their laughs and smiles, so it's good that the episode is justifying why the clowns are scary and not just banking on the fact that they're weird. Secondly, this episode is another tale that's based off of one of R.L. Stein's famous short stories from The Nightmare Hour. For those of you who don't know, The Nightmare Hour is a collection of short stories this TV series is based off of. All of R.L. Stein's scary stories in this novel have been adapted into episodes featured on the show. Just a heads up, not all of the Haunting Hour episodes were R.L. Stein's stories, and the ones that are were drastically changed for the TV version, Afraid of Clowns being one of them. The first Nightmare Hour story we actually covered on our channel was the two-parter, The Most Evil Sorcerer, which was an average episode at best. If you care to see our in-depth review on that, then feel free to see that video. However, the only story from the Nightmare Hour that wasn't fully adapted for TV was the tale Make Me a Witch, but the episode Intruders was actually loosely based off of that short, as my brother Wolf and I briefly discussed in our crossover review. I bring this up since this means that only a few of the episodes on R.L. Stein's The Haunting Hour were actually written by R.L. Stein himself, which reveals that he never created all the tales on the show, only the original shorts in his books, mainly from The Nightmare Hour. And as you can guess, Afraid of Clowns was a short story from The Nightmare Hour, meaning that this is directly from the mind of R.L. Stein himself, but it does have traces of changes all over it, so I'll compare this with the book version at the end of the review. So let's waste no more time and get on with the show. This is my review on R.L. Stein's The Haunting Hour episode, Afraid of Clowns. So our episode opens up at a birthday party where we see through the deranged POV shot of a stranger looking for the birthday boy. Well, judging by the title of the episode, I'm going to guess that the person we're following is... The Magician. No, of course, it's a clown. We meet our main character, a shy boy named Chris, who has a deep fear of clowns. Well, gee, I wonder why that is. 
Don't be scared, Chris. I'm your best friend forever. We flash forward to almost seven years later. Wait, almost seven years later? Who'd give a time like that? Well, it's because we find out that it's the day before Chris's 13th birthday, meaning that it isn't exactly seven years yet, since the writers thought that was important to know. Oh, and present day Chris is now played by Nick Cherry, the boy from the Night at the Museum movies. So yeah, Chris is about to turn 13 tomorrow, but we still see that his phobia of clowns has stayed with him all this time. Well, that's sad, but back to the wacky comedy moments when his dad awkwardly tries to give him the talk about how his body will go through some weird changes. It all begins with this little fella, the pituitary gland. He may be little, but he has big glands. <laughs> Chris avoids hearing out his dad's puberty speech when his idiot best friend Finch shows up to hang out with him. Okay, somebody was actually cruel enough to name their child Finch? Forget that, I'm just going to call this idiot Ezekiel, since he looks just like the total drama character, but is somehow even more useless than he was. So Ezekiel and Chris ride bikes together, where the idiot friend tells him that they can finally get in with the cool kids now, since Chris will be technically a teenager once his birthday arrives. Ezekiel helps motivate Chris by telling him that this could be the chance to finally hook up with his crush, Danica. The only girl in the cool kids who doesn't wear dark colors, so obviously she's important. In short, Danica has no personality and is just the cute girl we want to see Chris get with. So Chris tries to talk to Danica, but when she invites him to see the circus together, he turns her down, clearly because of his fear of clowns, disappointing her and pissing off his idiot friend. However, we see that the boys are being watched by... Ronald McDonald. So Chris and Ezekiel go to throw rocks at clown signs, where Chris's best friend acts like a total jerk towards him by criticizing how he's afraid of clowns and needs to just get over it. And immediately, all likability for this character goes right out the window. Seriously, who tells their best friend to get over their childhood trauma like it was ripping off a band-aid? I'm not even afraid of clowns, and even I think Ezekiel here is a jerk for not understanding Chris. I mean, would you tell somebody to get over their fears like it was easy if their phobia was of spiders or sharks or heights? Now, Ezekiel is surprisingly not a total jerk, since he does try to ease Chris's fear of clowns in the episode, but I don't like how he acts like people who are afraid of clowns are only kids who can't grow up. I know a lot of adults who are still afraid of clowns to this very day, so you aren't a loser if you yourself are afraid of clowns like Chris is. This only makes me turn against Ezekiel faster than his total drama teammates did, since he comes across as a smart mouth. Now I do know what angle the haunting hour is trying to go for here. Idiot friend doesn't understand why Chris is afraid of clowns, and is unable to help him out all that much for the suspense. I'm just saying that there's a difference between not understanding your friends and being an insensitive jerk. Chris tells his idiot friend that he actually fears that the clowns may be stalking him. But of course, his dude bro doesn't believe him and never tries calming him down like a true friend would, because that would be too paragon for this renegade. So Ezekiel leaves to be annoying elsewhere while Chris throws rocks in anger as he hallucinates the clown sign taunting him. Now this could have been an actually deep psychological horror moment, but it never amounts to anything since we know for a fact that the clowns are really stalking him, which kind of makes this point not that significant, but I do think it's super creepy still. So while Chris bikes home on a rainy day, we see a mysterious car stalking our kid hero.
Chris eventually catches on that somebody's following him and calls out the stalker hidden in the car, where guess who comes out? Yep, the clowns really are stalking Chris, as we see a whole gang of clowns come out of the tiny car laughing like hyenas, as the driver clown says they're all here for Chris, causing him to wisely run away as fast as he can, while the clowns sort of just stand there in a wide open road laughing. Chris makes it home and tries to hide, but he sees that the clowns know where he lives. Hold on a second. Earlier, the clowns were staying hidden behind a normal car to stay out of sight from the normal people, but suddenly they're now driving out in the open, shouting from their goofy mobile, while, where everyone can see them? How does no one see them? Does Chris live in Gotham City where seeing stalker clowns harassing people is the norm? My best guess is that the neighbors are all idiots and assume that the drive-by clowns are advertising for the local circus. But it's still amazing that these psycho clowns are never spotted by anyone but Chris. Chris tries to tell his dad that the clowns are following him, but of course the father doesn't believe him. Now, ordinarily, I'd make a joke about the adults being useless cliché, but if you can believe it or not, this moment is actually very important to the story. The dad actually never denies that the clowns are following his son. He just says that their purpose is meant to entertain people. Remember this moment. So right after the stalking clowns horror scene, the dad once more tries to give his son the puberty talk. And now you know where babies come from. Goodbye, child. No, thankfully the moments where the dad tries talking to his son aren't played for laughs this time in an otherwise serious episode. Well, an episode trying to be intentionally serious, that is. Chris ignores his dad's talk again and goes to bed. He will regret that decision later. Chris flashes back to his childhood, where we get more nightmare fuel for the kids, as we see how Chris grew his fear of clowns from Psycho Redhead here. We get a pretty disturbing scene where it looks like the clown is using a knife to slash Chris's hand, but it turns out he was cutting a piece of cake for him. Boy, it sure was nice of Chris's parents to get a cake with body part shapes. I'm sure all of you would love to chow down on a cake that's shaped like your best friend. It's a handy gift for a handsome birthday boy! Chris wakes up from his nightmare, where his parents congratulate him for finally turning 13. He gets a surprise visit from his crush, Danica, who asks him out on a date. But you'll never guess where they're going to. So of course, Chris goes out with Danica to the circus, so he can finally conquer his phobia once and for all, proving to his crush that he's a real man. Oh, but right after we get some unfunny, wacky moments where the idiot friend fails to impress the cool kids, of course. After all, who did you expect to be the funny character in this story? The clowns? Not going to lie, though, I feel like the idiot best friend was completely useless in this episode and could have been written out entirely. Unless the twist is that he's the true mastermind of this horror story. But back in the circus, Chris tries to face his fears, but we can clearly see that he won't be able to hold his ground for long. We then meet our main villain, the leader of the clowns, the Joker. I mean, Captain Crazy! That's spelled with two K's and two E's. The clown captain is easily the most entertaining character in this entire episode. The child actors are great too, but this clown is the most memorable person in the story because his performance is both hilarious and devilishly insane. This guy manages to make us laugh and fear him at the same time. Exactly what you'd expect out of a monster clown villain. The only thing I'm sad of is that his only major role comes right at the climax of the story. 
story. It's kind of a cop-out that the true clown leader doesn't show up until the last half of the story, though he still manages to leave a pretty good nightmare face. So, Captain Crazy acts weird for two minutes straight before he finally decides to do something with his clown minions. The clown leader says he requires a volunteer from the audience for a very special trick. Big shock, it's of course Chris. So, the clowns force Chris to come on stage to perform a trick that involves locking him up in a magic box. Not that magic box, a jack-in-the-box replica. In a very unsettling way, Captain Crazy reveals that they somehow know his name and that it's the kid's birthday. I'm going to assume that the audience thinks this is all a part of the show because absolutely nobody is questioning how the clowns know all this and how convenient it is that they got a birthday boy in on their magic trick. Chris is forced into the magic box as the clowns perform their act and start mugging the camera with their nightmare faces while we get some pretty trippy camera work that confuses both Chris and the viewer on what's going on right now. I must admit that I do like it when we share the perspective of our main character so we can feel for him. However, we get our big finish. It turns out that the clowns turned our kid hero into a clown just like them. Irony! So, the clowns show Chris his new look, and naturally he reacts with fear as he runs off stage while Danica and his jerk friend laugh at him. Wow, I thought I was kidding when I accused him as a villain. When the kid makes it to the dressing room backstage, he tries taking off all the clown gear, but discovers that it won't come off while Captain Crazy and his jokers all crowd around him to laugh at his suffering. Wait, all the clowns including the circus owner went after Chris when he ran away from their first performance? Who's entertaining the audience right now? Don't worry about the birthday boy, folks. We'll take care of him. In the meantime, please enjoy our newest performer. And we get our twist ending. This whole time, clowns are an entire secret species that live underground, and they've turned Chris into one of them to join their circus forever. But, we get a double twist ending, when Chris's parents show up to comfort him, kind of random if you ask me, we find out that Chris's parents were clowns all along. Yeah, apparently Chris's parents were wearing human faces on themselves to hide their true clown heritage and blend in with human society. It turns out that all those times where Chris's father was trying to give him the talk was not because he was telling him about human puberty, he was trying to teach him about clown puberty. You know, in hindsight, had Chris listened to his dad's speech about his body changing, this probably could have softened the blow instead of being psychologically scarred by his clown family. But remember everyone, clowns are idiots. <laughs> so, Chris has a mental breakdown upon discovering that he is the exact thing he's afraid of for all eternity, as the clowns close out the episode gang raping our hero. Good luck sleeping to that everyone. And that was Afraid of Clowns, so how does it hold up? Honestly, this episode was really amazing. It was good back then, and it's still just as great now. Now, I promised you all that I'd compare it to the book version, so let's get that out of the way first. One key difference in both versions of this story was the ending and some of the characters in general. In the book, the clowns were 100% evil and outright proclaimed that they had killed hundreds of kids for fun by molesting them to death. Yeah, no joke, the clowns offed multiple kids by inappropriately tickling their bodies everywhere until they died laughing, and they ate the corpses. Chris was going to be killed this exact way as well, until he struck a deal with them. Chris begged them not to kill him, and in exchange he transformed himself willingly into a clown so he could help them scope out future victims to molest to death, starting with his love interest Danica. Chris actually turns evil of his own free will in the Nightmare Hour version, and grew to enjoy his place among the serial killer demon clowns he used to fear. Wow, that R.L. Stein has some major dark corners in his mind. Of course, this was drastically changed for the TV version, because wouldn't you know it, the censors didn't like the idea of clowns molesting children on a family show. 
Though I honestly don't have any problems at all with the changes in the adaptation, I like that the clowns aren't completely evil in this episode like back on the Nightmare Hour because it provides them much deeper depth as characters. Wrap that one around your heads, everyone. The clowns on the TV show aren't evil at all. Sure, they're still creepy as you'd expect, but this episode surprisingly made them go from completely evil to morally gray at best. Here, the clowns are literally Chris's family. Them transforming Chris into a clown was technically his rite of passage into clownhood. So no matter how you look at it, the clowns think that this is the right solution, and this means that Chris was doomed from the start. One weakness in the book is that absolutely nobody raised any questions on all the children disappearances caused by the clowns, even though they were so obviously evil. Chris was a sympathetic character at, in the book, at first, but then it showed that his cowardice made him even more horrifying than the monster clowns that tried to kill him. The show version makes Chris a normal kid who we can relate with, and him being turned into a clown against his own will makes the story flow much better, since the clowns don't slaughter countless people for fun and only try to take Chris under their wing, fully supporting his growth into clownhood. Sure, it was by force, but remember, Chris was doomed to grow into a clown from the very start of his life. I do also like that the clowns are surprisingly not made out to be these savage demons like they were in the book, but instead, they are people who genuinely want to entertain others like real-life clowns. However, the clowns aren't above stalking one of their own and forcing Chris to abandon his entire old life to join their gang either, so this doesn't mean that these clowns are pure heroes at all. It's an incredibly dark twist ending still, since Chris's parents were in on the stalker clowns and their plan to help their son complete his transformation to be a true clown himself, which is so disturbing that I can't help but love how scary this got so fast. Yet I am curious as to what happened back on the stage after all the clowns followed Chris to give him his birthday surprise. Well, I'm going to assume that his jerk best friend Ezekiel sold his dude bro out to the clowns so he could steal his girl Danica and get in with the cool kids, showing that he was the true mastermind all along. One of the only things that I was disappointed with is how that creepy flashback clown never came back in the story. Wouldn't it have been so cool if that creeper psycho red clown we saw in the flashbacks was really Chris's father? Or maybe even Captain Crazy himself? It just felt like a wasted character to me since the clown that first scarred Chris for life never returns to the present day. But that's only my opinion. It's a twisted, you-are-what-you-hate story, but with lots of clever writing that throws us off guard, giving us something much deeper than what we'd expect out of this tale. Nevertheless, I think that Afraid of Clowns is an amazing story, since it does scare us on multiple levels of fear, subverts stupid cliches I hate, like the adults actually being useful, and the clowns having some blurred morality instead of being pure evil like in The Nightmare Hour, and it gave us a whole new look at clowns in general. I give this episode a gold skull, along with a very rare perfect score. Afraid of Clowns was my first Haunting Hour episode, and I love it just as much now, if not even more. No matter how many times I watch it, the story still holds up very well and remains incredible. While I don't find clowns that scary, I did find them very entertaining to watch, and the writers help make us be paranoid of them based on their actions, and not just the fact that they look weird. This episode was so good that a person who doesn't even find clowns scary at all enjoys it. That's how great this was, people. Afraid of Clowns is an awesome Haunting Hour episode that I highly recommend for its unsettling horror and surprisingly deep, twisted storytelling. It's a crazy show that'll never fail to amaze. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe, or just tune in for more videos posted here on Wolf Entertainment. I'm your host, Catastrophe, and I hope you all enjoyed the show.